Yeah. And by the way, if you're just joining us, uh, he is Stephen yeah. Spoonamore, uh, claiming that the 2024 elections were hacked. Okay, so Stephen, my next question would be this. You're, you're yeah. making some valid points, and I think it's very fair to ask these questions, okay? And you're making a lot of sense. But in from, from an outsider looking in like myself, and clearly I don't have the experience that you have, but from an outsider looking in, I say to myself, okay, what you're saying makes sense, but there still has to be actual, real evidence to present yeah, any sort see, of law, right? Yeah, so I have a testable theory, right? It's like, uh, uh, it, so, and I'll, I'll flag this. If, if I went to any of my customers, like all of the big credit card companies have hired me, every one of them, most of them a lot of times. If I went to any one of them and said, I have found a 5% anomaly in your data. I want to start an investigation. The big red siren lights will go on at the executive suite. Money gets approved the next 30 seconds and investigations start immediately. In business, so sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying the same thing and I'm saying this is testable. I, I never know for sure where a hack is. We find this by finding anomalies in a mathematical stable system of a network. And that's what we're seeing here. The mm -hmm. test is simple and it's two addressable steps. The one, you actually take the paper ballots and you must hand count them. If the tabulator is compromised, running them through a compromised tabulator may or may not produce the same result a second time, depending on what the compromise internal to it is. But hand counting them would go, holy yeah. smoke, you know, all of a sudden you'd say, this number doesn't match what the tabulator said before. And we've... I've been working with some voter advocacy groups and we have a list of precincts we want. And the yeah. challenge is there's been no engagement from the Harris people. You have to be. Why do you think that party. is? Why do you think, why do you think there's no engagement from them? I think that, that the well has been so poisoned by the stop the steal people. And frankly, um, most of the Democrats are just too nice to admit that thieves are stolen the election from them. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, That's what it seems true. to me. Let me I mean, ask you this. Let me let me ask you this. Um, some yeah. more questions in regards. We were led to believe that 25 million people registered to vote in this election. Yes, yet, new people. You, yeah. So let's talk about this. And this is a question that I asked the day after the election. I said, "Okay, are we led to believe that Kamala Harris got 20 million less votes this time around than Joe Biden?" Well, and and. Joe, and we can talk about Trump, where he was very close to the amount of votes that he got in 2020 as well. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, uh, you know something? Pull the ballots out and count them by hand. Uh, there's the That is a separate – what you're pointing to is a separate issue. And and not I'm not dismissing it. There's also people like – there's other investigators are pointing out that there are thousands and thousands of ballots that have been challenged this time from new voters, mostly young women that like here in Pennsylvania, it's over 18,000 ballots were left in their envelopes. They're all submitted by young women. They're claiming the signatures don't match and they won't let them be counted. Well, is it really voter fraud? Are you really excluding people because you think it's a fraudulent ballot or you're excluding them because you don't want their politics included? And I've said this over and over again. I'm, I'm a moderate Republican, I admit, but I want to live in a democracy and I want the ballots to count and I want my candidates to win. And if they don't, they don't. And then you have another what, election. What but, I'm hearing from you, based on what you've told me so far, is these 5% anomalies, which are strange. I'll give you yeah, that. You're huge. also Right. And you're also explaining to me, uh, other weird things like, for example, and, and we'll go back to this is like, you know, Trump barely won the popular vote. It was very, very close, which surprised me, by the way. But in this close of an election, which it was, it wasn't a mandate. I, I've been saying that to Republicans. Not This is not a mandate. It was very close. Half the country still didn't vote for Trump or don't like Trump. And with that being said, if it's that close of an election, how can you uh, is Trump just really lucky? How is it possible that he wins literally every single battleground state? I, I don't. Believe I ask myself. I don't believe it's true. Yeah, but I've said I don't believe it's true. And, and looking at the data, so if I want to look at and, and and this is speculation on my part, but 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 informed speculation is someone who looks at data anomalies all the time. When I look at the data and I pull out these weird undervote totals of whatever they are, whether they're electronic anomalies or if yeah. they're bullet yeah. belts. If I pull them out, it looks to me like Trump won Arizona, barely. Looks like he won Georgia, barely. Looks like he won Florida by a lot. It looks like he lost Nevada. 
it looks like he lost Wisconsin. It looks like he lost Michigan and Pennsylvania looks like it's a dead freaking tie. So if that's actually what the result is, great. That's actually the result. In which case, it really does come down to who really won Pennsylvania with the real numbers. And Dave McCormick just went through this long battle with Casey and it, you know, Casey's now conceded, but even Casey said, look, I lost by 15,000 votes. That's it out of, you know, millions. Mm -hmm. And he says, but there's 18,000 votes sitting there in envelopes that they won't let us open because they've questioned them. And I'm like, yeah, Yeah. I, I, you know, that's a different issue. That issue of whether you're suppressing the vote because you disagree with people versus real fraud, different issue. But I'm pointing to a fundamental question that the systems that counted the votes are not producing a believable result. They're just not. So um, so are you, so you're alleging that you believe that somebody within Donald Trump's orbit hacked into these machines. So my question to you is, well, somebody who wants, somebody who wants him to benefit. Now, whether or not, Right. He didn't even have to participate in it, but someone who wants him to be president did it. How would somebody go about doing that? And how could you find proof that somebody did that? Okay, so Not, yeah. there's two different there's two different core ways, and then a third way that's been suggested by another researcher. The two core ways, and if you've read my duty to, to warn letter, is that one, you would have to introduce bullet ballots. Now, strangely, there was an international bomb threat at 67 tabulation sites. Hmm. Now that tab- that meant those tabulation sites were evacuated and not necessarily in the same order. And could you introduce a lot of ballots with just Donald Trump's name checked? Yes, you could. If you also knew what precinct introduced them to. And that involves a lot of Confederates, which I'll get to this bounty we're now offering a group of people approach me about. So you would have to do one other thing in advance. You'd have to mark that people voted in the e-poll book so that it matched the number of voters to the number of ballots. And here's the the trick. When Elon Musk came forward and said, I have this wonderful idea. You need to sign up for a lottery to support Donald Trump. I looked at it and said, that's an interesting approach to marketing a candidate. I think it's illegal, actually. Well, I'm going to set aside whether it's legal. I signed up. I said, I'm going to see what this is. I like stuff like this. I'm going to go look. And and I because I smelled a rat, and you know what information they wanted in this modern age? Your street address. They didn't want your socials. They didn't want your email. They didn't that's want your fine. phone. They didn't Why? want to text you. They wanted your street address. Why? Because that's how poll books are organized. Mm-hmm. They wanted to build their own e poll book of people that were willing to sign up for a million bucks, and they claim they got millions of names. Okay, so now I'm Donald Trump on on election night. I'm doing my thing. Elon Musk, meanwhile, who Joe Rogan and other people said had his own app. He's watching the real data be exchanged. He has his own copy of an e-poll book broken down by precinct by his data engineers. And they know who they are out there, data engineers. Someone took that lottery information and broke it down by precinct. 100% guarantee that. They now have this. End of the day is coming along. They're looking at their totals in each state. They're going, we need another 20,000 votes in Pennsylvania to be outside of recount range. Great. They can electronically in seconds, in seconds, if they're in the poll book, mark 20,000 voters. They now know the precinct. Now they have to have Confederates that can either A, introduce actual ballots into those precincts, or B, the tabulators have to be compromised and they have to tell the tabulator what the new total is going to have to be. And so the allegation there is that Elon Musk had information that almost nobody else could have had uh, in, in regards to if, if it's close in a certain battleground state, uh, he could, and again, could compromise a certain district in a battleground state, knowing uh, a certain number of votes that, that Donald Trump might need. So there wouldn't have to be a recount. So that's if you've, bu- if you've built your own e-poll book database of people who are pledged your supporter, and you've looked at the real poll book database and said, okay, here's 75 people in each precinct. And it's a, a computer can do this automatically. It can know yeah. how many people have voted in the precinct. And he's got a sign up. Of, these are the people who promised they would. These are the people who have, and right. these people are missing. He now knows the Delta of his missing people. He could mark them voted. And then- I hear you. Uh, everything yeah. you're saying certainly makes sense to me. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm, a, assert, I'm not yeah. saying I know this has happened. This right. is how you could do it. And I've, I've I said you. in my letter how you can prove it. 
I you hear can you can prove this. You can prove it, but here's the up here uphill battle. It's going to cost a lot of money. Yep. Does the Harris campaign want to go down this rabbit hole? Apparently uh, not. She already conceded number three. And again, it goes Very back to what I said earlier. You have to, even though what you're saying makes sense, you have to have some real hard evidence. And it sounds like to me, what you're saying is you believe this very well could have happened. Let's check. Let's check the machines. Let's count every ballot. Correct. The problem, right. But the problem with that is with respect to you, the problem with that is, is that I don't think anybody's willing to go that far unless we already have some really hard evidence. And I'm not trying to discount anything that you've said, because I think you're making a lot of sense to be clear. But the problem is, in order for that to happen and put the country through something like that, there would really have maybe it's a private conversation that Elon Musk had with somebody talking about doing exactly what you claim he could have done. Maybe it's a private conversation that Vladimir Putin had with Donald Trump. Something like that comes forward. If there was evidence like that, then I think, OK, time to have the recount. But you see where I'm going with that? And I'm not trying to discount anything you've said. All I'm saying is, no, you're, you're right. Realistically, and, and, yeah. I get it. And, 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 and so I've, I've laid out, it, it's sort of like there's people out there in the world that are professionals at spotting forged paintings Yeah, and they look at them and they, and, and some people say, well, how do you know? And it's like, I've done so many of these, I look at it and you know what suspect. Right. This is what I do for a living. When I see a data anomaly set in a large network, this one stinks something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I've asserted, here's how you test it. Now, one of the things that I could add to this, a group of people approached me, uh, they put together $100,000 and they said, if we put this $100,000 out as a bounty, will you review tips to see if your theories are correct? I said, absolutely. So they went live with this. It's it's uh, balletbounty.com. They've got a $100,000 reward. Myself and a team of about six or seven others, now we may have as many as 20 soon, mm -hmm. are going to review the tips as they come in. Because okay. people out there know, in either case, it, in the case where you've compromised the electronics of the voting machines, which there's now these crazy pictures emerging of all these people wearing T-shirts with the password, the firmware password that goes into the voting machine in the voting place. It's like, where did this come from? All of, I didn't know any of this before the election, but yeah. I've been sent 50 of these pictures now and they're all inside. Some of them are standing next to the tabulator wearing a shirt with the firmware password that changes the code. And I'm like, right. And where's the FBI on this? And yeah, I'm like, okay, that's, people that's, that's are sending me this stuff. And I'm like, we could also, we could also talk about the bomb threats that took place right. that day. That certainly had some effect on things. We can talk about Donald Trump that day who was claiming that there was cheating going on in Philadelphia. when we know that was also not true, that's voter intimidation. We could go back to talking about Elon Musk. He's not paying people to sign a petition. Let's be honest. He was paying people so that they can sign up and vote for Donald Trump. And we all know that. And, and when Elon Musk got involved, uh, I think he had some dirty hands on, on some things. But again, go back to what I said earlier. We have to have a there there. We have to have something. And, uh, you know, we're running out of time. Uh, so that's that. I think that's the issues that we have here. And I think it's a real big uphill battle.